What's up guys, Travis with T-Customs Productions, T-Customs.com. Today I'm back with another Ableton Live 9 tutorial. Today I'm gonna to be showing you really quickly how to convert an audio drum break into MIDI format. I get a lot of questions about drum programming, sequencing, and different topics related to hip hop drum work. And so I thought this would be a good topic to cover today. I haven't covered this previously because I don't typically use this method that often. I've shot some videos in the past showing how you can extract a groove from a break and apply that to whatever drum sequence that you've programmed yourself. And that's typically the approach that I take, but there are certain instances where this technique would come in handy. If you have a break that you really like the groove of, but you just don't like the actual drum samples and sounds that are being used, this is an easy way you can convert it to MIDI format and then be able to substitute in your own drum samples. That's going to be the focus for the day. And as you can see here, I have a four bar audio drum break in here. I'll just give you a little preview of what this sounds like. So before we convert this break to MIDI, we're going to want to make sure that at least our main kick and snare notes are somewhat on the grid. Now, obviously the, one of the main purposes for doing this is to extract the groove. And so you might like the characteristics of the drum break that it's kind of loose or it has a certain type of groove or feel to it. To get the best results for this, we would probably want to have our kicks, our main kicks and snares somewhat on the grid. And that way when we export it, everything's gonna kind of align in our loop. And so once you have your break imported, all you have to do is right click on the audio file and convert drums to new MIDI track. Now there are other conversion options, harmony and melody, which these two are really cool. If you haven't explored them, I would recommend it. And in the future, I will be shooting some videos as I dig into them a little bit more, but we're gonna use convert drums to new MIDI track for this tutorial today. And so it's converting. Okay, so what you see here is that Ableton now created a new MIDI track that has some MIDI information in it. And it also went ahead and assigned a certain drum kit to this. And if I solo this and play this through, you'll be able to hear what Ableton's done with that audio information and how they've converted it into MIDI and substituted it in their own drum samples. first thing to note with this is that the conversion is not going to be perfect because it's taking an audio format and it's doing its best to evaluate that. I mean, convert those sounds that it's analyzing into the appropriate MIDI information. If we come in here and look at this, we may see some notes that are a little bit off that aren't right. Like I noticed a second snare that it put here at the end that was actually just a kick when you go back to the original drum break. But for the most part, it's done a really good job of separating the hi-hat, the kick, and the snare and giving us the MIDI information. And as you can see, all the velocities are, are varied throughout this. You may have to do some further manipulation with this to get it to sound exactly the way that you want. Now, I don't personally like these particular sounds. It's using a 606 kit by default. Now, my intention with this is to obviously substitute in my own personal drum sounds. So the first thing I would wanna do before I get in and kind of nitpick and uh, make changes to this MIDI sequence is just go ahead and get new drum samples imported. And so it's using this kick, if we solo this out again, it's using this kick 606, this snare 606, and this hi-hat closed. So I'm just gonna go into a couple of my drum sample packs and replace those particular sounds. Let's pick this kick from the drum sample pack volume four, we'll replace this 606. I'll replace this with a rim shot. I'll just pick a hi-hat from volume two sample pack. So I don't know how this is gonna sound, but we'll figure it out. So on first listen, the first thing that stuck out to me was the snare was very soft in certain places. And you may want some fluctuation in your snare depending on the type of track you're working on. But for me, I wanna bring up all these snares to probably just the peak 127 MIDI velocity. So I'm just gonna select all of those and just drag all those up to 127. So the next thing I'm gonna do is delete this False snare note, I mean, you could leave it in there if you wanted to or bring the velocity down or something. But if I wanna keep it the same as the original drum break, 
but Ableton has just put in a false note based on its analysis. So I'm just gonna delete that. And then one other thing for me is the variation in the kick velocities as well. I want my primary kicks to be all pretty consistent. The ghost kicks that come in, I may wanna leave those velocities the same or drop them a little bit. The ones that come down on a major count, I wanna go ahead and bring those up. Overall, I think it sounds pretty cool. There may be some additional changes and things that I kind of clean up on some of these notes, but you can use your own judgment on that and figure out what works best for you and the particular break that you're using. So just to recap really quickly, I'll play the original drum break that we started with, and then I'll play you our newly converted MIDI drum track. So hopefully this gives you some ideas if you haven't explored this particular feature. Like I said, in the future, I will talk about the other audio to MIDI conversions that you have in Ableton that are really kind of interesting. If you enjoy this type of video, please make sure to thumbs up and you can also link in the description for other Ableton Live tutorials and subscribe to the channel to be notified when new videos like this are uploaded. There will also be a link in the description for all the drum samples that we're using this tutorial as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching and a lot of other free resources and things like that. If you have any other questions, let me know. Connect with me on social media. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. FX03 was the crowd cheer. One of the things I did for this because I wanted to extend it actually for a full eight bars is I did a little looping trick on the tail to keep this maximum volume going back and forth once it hit the end of the sample. But the loops are not exactly right. And so this is the next step more or less in my process. I'm taking these rough loops and I'm now enabling the warp engine with my seven half step transpose. And from there,